Hi, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and what is going on today, man? Like, what's really going on? I mean, it's just week six of the regular season. Most teams are having normal seasons, no drama. We're having drama left and right. You got the Dan Snyder news today that we're going to talk about with him saying that he has dirt on the entire NFL, all of the owners, and even Roger Goodell, so there's no way that they can force him out. Then there's this huge article that came out then talking about everything in the background jason wright saying that he'll have to outlast dan snyder to get anything done here so he's already trying to backdoor him with good reason but it's just like so much chaos and then on top of all of that our starting corner technically our cb1 has requested a trade and he's one of the highest paid players on the team so now with this already one and four going into a short week thursday night against the really hungry chicago bears team we have all of this drama going on so yeah man i mean the reason you're looking at this picture right now is because while we talk about everything i'm gonna have some film session on from a game we actually won this season that week one jaguars game so while we're talking about william jackson and the sadness behind that and the chaos and like why did we even sign a man cover corner if we're just gonna play zone all of that type of stuff we're gonna talk about everything his trade value potentially how much money he's making is it time to fire the entire coaching staff we're going to talk about all of that and a dance night of situation while looking at some positive film i just feel like we need it right now so before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday when i live stream during every regular season game and hopefully the postseason but it's not looking too good right now but i'm still speaking it into existence but i do live streams where i break down everything that's going on live play by play for every regular season game of course since we play tonight i'll be live streaming thursday night as in today and i may even live stream for like an hour on sunday so we could just talk about anything and i'll probably like watch some of the games that's going on probably with my sunday tickets so i'll have like four games going and we can talk about the games that's currently going on on sundays and thing like that game won't be like a three four hour stream like i normally do for the commanders but i'll probably have somewhat of a chill live stream for like an hour on sunday so make sure y'all pull up for that and without further ado let's get it All right, so like I said, I just feel like we just need some positivity, man. We just, <laughs> we just need something good on the screen while we talk about all this bad on and off the field for the commanders. Well, let's go ahead and start with the whole William Jackson situation. I mean, this is just crazy. A bombshell Snyder article. I mean, this is probably one of the most revealing and crazy chaotic ones yet easily top three which is sad the fact that we've had so many articles come out about our owner that there's like a top rating list of which ones are the craziest but this is definitely one of them ones this is bigger than a few of the other ones and then on top of that our starting cb1 the guy we were so excited to sign last year is requesting for a trade it all started when ian rapaport came and reported it william jackson iii prefers a new home and a new scheme and his name has been at the center of trade talks talks story with mike garafalo and tommy pilicero they have a whole article on it and everything and so he basically just requested to be traded and, and, and the commanders have already been actively trying to trade him teams apparently may have been calling for him we'll see um i hope so i hope there's some trade value there because i don't think this is just like a request to trade to enact some type of change no i think he's just like yeah i want out please let me out um we've tried different things it's not gonna work and so just remember william jackson signed a three-year 40.5 million dollar deal with washington in september of 2021 and he was benched in the first quarter of sunday's game against the titans do not forget that and so in the article you have william jack um, they're saying that quote jackson is not frustrated specifically with the team it's not necessarily the chaos on and off the field that would normally deter a lot of people but rather he considers himself more of a man-to-man -man cornerback and washington has run a lot of zone thus far since he's been here we ran all types of coverages and you could probably say man coverage is the one that we've ran the least i mean we've run like a cover two high skin all kinds of stuff and it's just like man this is not 
not what I wanted to do. This is not what I did in Cincinnati. Why would y'all bring me into this situation and promise me all these great things and then play me out of scheme, basically? And I can see that argument. We're going to get into, like, why this is so bad. And we're going to talk about, like, is it really for real time to just to fire everybody for malpractice? Because, like, how did we even end up making this decision? Rivera, at the end of the day, you wanted all of this power. You wanted to control the team. You wanted to basically be Bill Chapman. Bill Belichick where you're the GM you're the coach everything runs through you so anything that happens even if it wasn't your idea you signed off on everything so the fact that we brought in a literally only man cover corner and William Jackson that's all he does and then tried to get him to play zone it's just like what, what are we doing here like so Jack DeRio are you gonna adjust your scheme to run more man coverage for him but hey guess what you can't because Kendall Fuller, your cornerback too, your CB2, the best corner outside of William Jackson technically. I mean, I feel like Benjamin St. Juice has been our best corner this year. But the guys that are making the most money, two of your top seven highest paid players on the entire team one is a man cover corner the other is a zone cover corner it's really difficult for them to even be on the field at the same time it's not like you can put one on one side the other on the other side and ask them to do the same exact thing no Kendall Fuller gets killed in man coverage William Jackson gets killed in zone coverage that's how you had those CD Lamb open touchdowns in that Cowboys game Kendall Fuller you have him in man coverage wide receivers run right by him or bully him and, and just big body him for touchdowns at the corner of the end zone and things like that so Again, it just goes back to even outside of Jack DeRio, you should probably try to find a way to get more man coverage for William Jackson and more zone coverage for Kendall Fuller. If you just got to run both at the same time on the same play, maybe do that, I guess, or something. I don't know. That's kind of weird, but it's technically possible to get creative. But the root of all problems is personnel decisions. Why well, sign a man cover corner to a Jack the Real defense that primarily loves to run a lot of zone anyway? Tom Rivera, the same thing in Carolina. Why would you bring a man cover corner into this situation? So this is just straight up malpractice from team building. For coaching has already been really bad as well, but just personnel decisions, all of that type of stuff has been absolutely terrible they've made a couple of really nice signings cheap got like charles leno getting him for cheap we paid him long term logan thomas when he's healthy we got him for cheap jd mckissick for cheap we've made some good decisions we drafted fairly well finding some sleepers in the third round second round later and stuff like that but overall like this is just abysmal personnel decision making right now but just to go back, William Jackson III again was benched in that week five game against the Tennessee Titans after giving up an 11-yard catch and a nine-yard catch on his only two targets. He was only targeted twice. He gave up both of those targets, catches, and allowed 10 yards per reception. And then he had a missed tackle on Derrick Henry, literally benched right after that. We brought in Benjamin St. Juice to be our starting outside corner, and Rashad Wild Goose became our slot corner in place of Benjamin St. Juice, who moved outside. And it was already reported that it was because of injury, but we all knew, like, it wasn't a back thing. That apparently, he had this back injury that he's been dealing with over the past week, and he was limited in practice last week. He was fully participated in practice this week, and then suddenly, he's not flying with the team to the Bears game in Chicago so I was already like before this news even came out today yesterday or the day before that when they said that he wasn't going to the Chicago Bears game I was like man this is this he's he's out man this is looking ugly my boy William Jackson's probably about to just go ahead and get up out of here it's a difference of opinion Ron Rivera literally benched him I mean William Jackson in the interview after the game tried to make it seem like it was his back Ron Rivera didn't even try to hide it he said we just decided to go another way didn't even try to hide the fact that they benched him and when you bench a top five player on your team more than likely a trade is coming but I'm surprised William Jackson is his chill as he is about it because honestly i would be more upset if i'm him because again basically he's not even upset at the team he's not upset about anything other than the fact that they, he's a man cover corner and they have him playing zone coverage i'm very surprised he's handling this so well and he's requested a trade and not even necessarily demanding a trade but it would behoove the commanders to go ahead and get that guy moved out as soon as possible especially before that november 1st deadline but just to go back a little bit more, he gave up 14 catches for 199 yards on 17 targets so far on the year leading up to that week five game against the Titans. And again, he allowed both of his targets to be caught for an average of 10 yards and a missed tackle. And he's also been flagged multiple times so far throughout the season. I mean, he got a few 
against the Cowboys, boy. It was ugly. And just to go visit his contract, man, if you're looking at cap hits right now, he's our second highest paid player this season. Now, annually, he's like top five. But this year, only Carson Wentz gets paid more than him. And Carson Wentz is making $28 million this season as far as cap hit goes. William Jackson is second with a $13.8 million cap hit. Again, Kendall Fuller is fourth. Only behind Curtis Samuel, William Jackson, and Carson Wentz as a $12.6 million cap hit. And which is it's so crazy because of, for the past few weeks, while William Jackson hasn't looked good, we've or and even before the season, even before the season, even before I thought William Jackson was struggling as much as he was, even before I thought Kendall Fuller was struggling like this, while I was optimistic about this defense going into the season, I was like, I mean, even if William Jackson and or Killer Fuller Kendall Fuller are balling you may want to replace one of them in the draft so you can save some cap space to pay a lot of these other guys like Deron Payne Chase Young coming up eventually Montez Sweat Cameron Curl Cole Holcomb so I already had the idea like maybe maybe just maybe like William Jackson like Kendall Fuller again this is before the even season the season even started so i didn't even know all of this would happen but i was like you may want to cut one of those guys let one of them go trade them maybe so you can save a good over 10 million dollars worth of cap space and then just replace them in the draft or either first round either first round second round i know a lot of people want my georgia bulldog keely ringo literally has all of the tools in the world all of the athleticism all of the speed the strength super the length he's like six three can run with anybody but he has a lot of mental things he still needs to work on. So I'm not too confident in drafting him like top 10, top 15 yet. But I think he could be a still later in the first round. Because again, he has all of the tools. And he's probably going to get drafted top 10. Especially if he just, just decides to ball out for the rest of the season. Because I felt like he looked better last season covering Jamison Williams than he does covering random no-name receivers that I didn't even know their name going into the game so far this season he's been struggling against. I don't know, it's weird. But again, my main point is we were already talking about replacing William Jackson or Kendall Fuller with somebody in the draft to save some money. My boy Rich has been on the Kele Ringo train for forever. I mean, since going back last year, let's go get Kele Ringo to replace one of these corners. And now, I mean, William Jackson, you trade him, you save around $14 million of cap space for this year and for next year which does open up the possibilities of, of paying all of those guys that are already listed and potentially bringing in other free agents to help elsewhere, like specifically this offensive line right now to save Carson Wentz's life. And if you end up throwing Sam Howell out there at some point, you may want to have a better O-line than what Andrew Norwell and Nick Martin are giving you. Even though Tyler Larson should be back soon, maybe he'll start for us against the Chicago Bears, but we'll see. But again, two of your four highest paid players are your two corners that can't work together. How are you going to have a man cover corner and a zone cover corner on the field at the same time at some point somebody's struggling any given play somebody's out of their element it's just absolutely ridiculous and then and then again on top of all of that Benjamin St. Juice your third round pick from just a year ago the 2021 draft is honestly been your best corner this season he even kind of looked like your best corner his rookie season at times but then he was dealing with a concussion injury all year and then the shades of ever situation a lot of people speculate that's probably why he decided to miss some time but this year he's easily been our best corner he, has he been perfect no but he did a better job against aj brown and a lot of these guys even cd lamb than anybody else could have william jackson or kendall fuller so right now he looks like our best corner and he's making little to no money again he's a third round draft pick that man is only a 1.159 million dollar cap hit and is outperforming your almost 14 million dollar corner that has requested a trade and your 11 million dollar corner that's almost 28 years old and can only zone cover but at least it's a zone coverage scheme so kendall fuller staying and william jackson leaving probably makes the most sense if we had to choose either one and also kendall fuller is cheaper william jackson i mean like i've been saying man you put kendall fuller's brain and IQ in William Jackson's body, you literally have a top five corner, just like Keely Ringo. Even though I think Keely Ringo is probably more athletic overall, but William Jackson has every tool you would want in a corner, and especially in a man cover corner. That would be nice if we ran some man coverage, but even so, he was getting beat on some man coverage snaps, even against CeeDee Lamb. 
even against receivers against the Cowboys and just in general he's been getting beat even in man coverage so that hasn't necessarily helped but again he has all of the tools you want as a man cover corner and then Kendall Fuller has all of the IQ and anticipation and instincts and all of that if you could literally put Kendall Fuller's brain William Jackson's body top five corner no debate like it's ridiculous it's sad we can't just make them one person but again man the personnel is the most to blame for this man I mean we were trying to fit a square peg in a, in a round hole I mean it just never made sense I mean, and then now with William Jackson complaining about the scheme, who else may complain about the scheme? I know the defensive line was complaining about Sam Mills III for years. One of the main reasons Matt Ioannidis wanted to get out of here, it was reported that several defensive linemen didn't want to be coached by him. It took them forever to finally fire him, and I was still surprised that they did. I'm still surprised today that Ron Rivera finally fired a long-term, a long-time friend. He just, he's so loyal, loyal to a fault. I'm just so surprised that he fired Sam Mills. Maybe... We'll get some other unexpected surprises as far as personnel decisions and firing of, firing of coaches and hiring of other coaches and things like that. But I'm scared, man. Who with other players are looking around like, man, William Jackson requested a trade. And if he gets traded, man, I'm not liking my situation too much either. Let me try to get up out of here or at the very least, I'll just keep my mouth shut now. And when my contract is up, I'm just going to dip just i'm out of here kind of like a brandon sheriff where no matter how much money we offered him we clearly offered brandon sheriff way more money than what the jaguars gave him we offered to make him the highest paid guard in nfl history and the jaguars paid him like an average guard basically i mean he got pretty good money but he didn't even get close to resetting the market and he decided to go to the jaguars and so what if players and that's not even a scheme thing brandon sheriff was just tired of the commanders period but what if other players are like man as soon as i can get up out of here i'm gone man i tried it and I, I i love my teammates i love some of the coaches but overall this just ain't working it, it might become like an abandoned ship type of thing but we'll see but by this time next year will we have all new coaches a whole new scheme whole new like i mean of course we're gonna have a new draft class new free agency class but is it gonna be under new leadership other than ron rivera and jack DeRio and scott turner it's looking a little ugly man it looks like we may end up having a fire sale for coaches Will we end up elevating Chris Harris to be our DB's coach, or would they just go get a guy from out of nowhere, like a Sean Payton, and then he brings in his own defensive coordinator and things like that? I don't know. I have no idea, but it's definitely starting to look more and more like that as time moves on. It is crazy. But again, the trade deadline is November 1st. The most you're probably going to get from him is probably before that deadline. If you wait till after then, wait till the end of the season, like the offseason or something, maybe during the draft, you'll be able to get some decent trade value. But the most you're going to get is trading him to a Super Bowl contender before the trade deadline. Honestly, that's that's the highest value that he can go for right now. Now, what is that value? No idea. I don't know what teams would possibly offer up for a William Jackson. I'm pretty sure teams are only offering sevens and sixth right now as far as round picks that's it I can't I can't see them going higher I mean honestly he has the talent of a first round corner but with the way we've misused them his tape isn't good this season and again even in man coverage he's been getting beat this year so I just doubt any team is just gonna run to the podium run to the phone and like beg us to get them and so we don't have much leverage right now the problem is leverage is not the talent William Jackson has talent. The problem is leverage, and I think with the leverage situation we have going on right now, I think at best, the hope, the best we can hope for is a fifth-round pick right now for him. I'm not going to lie. That, I think that's by far the best. And then moving on to the Dan Snyder situation, there's literally a quote that says, the NFL can't F-word with me. I mean, he is like straight up just blunt. Y'all can't touch me. What you going to do? And then he's talking about, I got dirt on everything everything in the nfl he said quote i can blow up unquote other nfl owners the league offices and even roger goodell so apparently he has dirt on everybody so multiple owners told espn they've heard that snyder hired private investigators into other owners and goodell so that man has hired sherlock holmes to look into everything that everybody else got going on he was like okay y'all want to investigate me all right, I'm going to privately investigate y'all. I don't know how legal or illegal that is, but either way, apparently he has some dirt to the point that now it's impossible for us to get rid of Dan Snyder because he'll bring everybody with him. And, and that just sounds like that's just not going to happen. So they probably just going to chill out. I mean, we already knew for the past year or two everything that was coming out from all of the different 
from all of the different investigations and then with him with the money situation holding a lot of money and not giving it back to the owners like he's supposed to splitting it up evenly and stuff like that withholding ticket sales and all of that type of stuff when he wasn't kicked out for that because he possibly had dirt on NFL owners, I already knew it's going to be impossible to get rid of Dan Snyder. And now, sounds like it's even more impossible. But you can go read the article. I'm not going to talk about that for too long. But one of the most interesting parts is that Jason Wright basically says something to the extent of that he wants to outlast Dan Snyder. He would hope that Dan Snyder eventually is gone and then he's still there so that he can finally enact the culture change that he wants to do. And that sounds like a good thing in theory. But I mean, the fact that this came out in the article, does that mean Dan Snyder knows now? Or will Dan Snyder just read that or hear about that and be like, nah, that's not my boy Jason Wright doing me like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's an awkward situation now, too, because Dan Snyder man he rarely has people around him it'll be his wife jason wright and maybe like one other person everything he does when they were going around looking at stadiums in the off season even before J dan snyder was technically banned from the nfl temporarily banned, whatever it is even though he's not really banned from anything but suspended whatever you want to call it but i mean but at the end of the day jason wright is one of his like closest people to him like he's one of the very few people that actually talks to dan snyder face to face on a lot of stuff actually has contact with him jason wright is closer to dan snyder than even ron rivera is and it's just like man this this show partner trying to backdoor you right now but he has a good reason to but of course dan snyder's eyes he feels like he's right about everything so now it's jason wright an enemy i mean this is going to be a lot of chaos and drama behind the scenes now even off the field on top of everything we got on the field we're one and four there's drama period but our drama at one and four is different from other nfl teams drama at one and four again both on and off the field it's just the way of a Redskins, a Washington football team, a Commanders fan life, man. That's just what we got to go through. One thing about this organization, we're never boring, but it would be nice to have some fun and actually be positive and win. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like on this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. As always, man, I appreciate all of the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now. I'm going to catch y'all later. I will be live streaming the game tonight. I'm out.